Hello wonderful person and welcome to the moon. In today's video we're going to discover a little bit more about this beautiful partner of ours and we're going to talk about the meteorite craters that you see in front of you. Basically that are practically everywhere. You're going to find out how often they form on the moon and how many new meteorites this beautiful object receives every year. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> So by now you've probably realized that all of these little craters on the surface of the moon are the result of the collision of various meteorites, asteroids and basically tiny and or big rocks like for example this one right here. Okay that was a little bit too fast, let's do this again. And ready, steady and here it comes. This is a rock named Carmen, he's about to fall on the surface of the moon and leave a bit of a crater. Now this has been happening for something like 4.7 billion years. And it obviously is still going on even today. And look at this beautiful collision with the moon. Now, what I wanted to actually discuss in this video is um, a little bit mathematical. It's going to basically focus on the idea of much smaller rocks. Like, for example, let's just launch another one, but make it more realistic. Making it approximately, I don't know, like 10 meters, 10 meters big. That possibly not even that. Let's make it even smaller than that. It's going to be about one meter big. Uh, so rocks just like that one, wherever it is, this tiny, tiny rock by the name of Bonust. That's a good name. I like it. Um, colliding with the moon and leaving tiny craters on the surface and essentially not really causing any trouble to anyone until, of course, you start colonizing this beautiful uh, satellite, the moon. If we decide to make a colony here, it's going to become a problem for us. We actually have to find out how many of these little meteorites and asteroids land on the surface so we can actually estimate the potential hazards to the future colonists, to people living on the moon, and of course to the buildings that we construct here. A simple collision, even as simple as the one you just saw a second ago, would actually um, leave a relatively large crater and would also produce a lot of various fragments that would essentially, well, you can kind of see them there. They would fly away in various directions, including toward your building that you construct on the moon and possibly collide with it and destroy things inside of it because moon has no atmosphere. Things here fly really, really fast. If anything that uh, collides with the moon releases a fragment, the fragment is going to go ridiculously fast. Nothing will stop it. And so we need to actually find out how um, frequently these collisions occur and how frequently the moon gets bombarded with these various rocks. So we're going to use a bit of math, a bit of analysis of various photographs that, photographs that NASA has actually taken over the past few years. And we're also going to discuss the idea of having a colony on the moon and, you know, how likely we are basically to die if we stay there. And so what you see in front of you right now is actually a, a picture that was analyzed by NASA and they discovered that uh, this is basically a before and after shot. Uh, before the asteroid or before the meteorite hits the moon, this is what it looks like and then it hits the moon and this is what it looks like afterwards. Essentially, uh, things kind of change and they found quite a lot of these. As a matter of fact, they found 222 of these collisions even on, on a small surface um, within about uh, 3.4 years. So it does happen quite a lot. As a matter of fact, per year, if you were to do a bit of a calculation, you would discover that there's something like a thousand different collisions on the entire surface of the moon. So it can become quite problematic. Basically, in one year, I will just do actually in days. In one day, you would receive approximately three separate collisions. Now, this could actually be a miscalculation on NASA's part because it's not, it's still not particularly accurate, uh, but it's somewhat approximate and somewhat um, scary. So three collisions per day, anywhere on the surface. Could be there, could be there, and could be there. Obviously, they're not as big as the ones I'm watching at the moon right now. They would be very, very tiny rocks, but they would still produce a lot of fragments that could go as far as 30 kilometers away from the impact um, area. So, like, for example, if the collision occurred right here, the fragments would go as far as this. So we have to be really, really careful when trying to basically plan out these missions. So let's do a bit of math. Let's try to calculate um, how likely are we to actually get killed by a fragment uh, if we stay on the moon for a year. So we're going to do a bit of calculation here. So let's just imagine that um, an area of approximately 100 square kilometers on the moon surface um, is essentially the potentially hazardous area if there is any kind of impact, including a small impact. So for example, if I were to launch 
a tiny 10 meter uh, rock by the name of I cannot see anymore. It's very tiny. It's called the Lemgitu. If this rock were to uh, basically collide with the moon right there, where it's about to collide, the area of about 10 by 10 kilometers would still be quite hazardous due to fragments. So these fragments might actually um, end up hitting the base, uh, wherever you're stationed, your colony, and might actually kill people. So even though it looks so tiny, these tiny fragments are still dangerous. They're going to be moving at speeds of up to um, a kilometer or two kilometers per second. And uh, we don't currently have any material that can withstand such a collision. So let's just say that 10 by 10 is, is basically the danger area. So let's see, let's calculate what is the, actually the chance of, like, let's just say we're here. What's the chance of these 10 by 10 areas appearing somewhere in the vicinity of, of us? In other words, what is the chance that we're basically going to be killed by one of these fragments? And the way we're going to calculate this is basically, well, we know that um, we have pictures of about 6.6% of the entire area of the moon. So we're going to basically consider that those 222 craters we observed in 3.4 years were only from a small uh, part of the moon. Now we're going to consider the entire moon. So if we were to actually calculate this using a simple calculation, we would first be able to find the so-called danger area or total area of hazard um, for basically like one year. So what I'm saying is this, we know that it's a 10 by 10 area that is hazardous. So that's 100 square kilometers. We know that there are uh, approximately 989 um, asteroid collisions per year on the total surface of the moon. And basically to find this, we take into consideration that it's only 6.6% of the area and um, the observations we had were from 3.4 years. So if you cross multiply and divide everything, you'll get 989 collisions, which is close to about 1000. So in other words, there's about 1000 collisions on the entire surface of the moon. And that means that the total hazard area per year is approximately 100,000 square kilometers. That's actually pretty large. That's basically the area of about 316 kilometers by about 316 kilometers. So it's a relatively large square. It's actually even bigger than this. It's about this big, I believe. And that's, of course, per year. And so every year, this is basically the hazard area. Now, what is it in terms of actual probability? So what is the chance of us just sitting right here somewhere getting hit by one of those fragments? So if we consider all of this hazard area I just talked about, and if we consider the fact that the moon's total area is about 38 million square kilometers, what we can do here is we can actually discover the total probability by taking 100,000 and dividing by 38 million, and then obviously multiplying by 100 to get percentage, which would give us approximately 0.26%. So per year, every year, uh, and this is obviously where us being not very sort of realistic and more conservative, but there's about 0.26 or 0.3% chance that you might actually get killed by, by a rock. And honestly, that's a pretty high risk. That's a pretty high chance, actually. In other words, in like 100 years, this would obviously increase, possibly making this a very, very high risk of being killed by rock, which means that we actually have to start thinking about how we're going to possibly protect future colonies on the surface of the satellite. Uh, so in order for us to actually protect ourselves from these collisions, from essentially being killed by fragments, we definitely need to come up with technology or with some sort of a uh, protective layer for those colonies that will essentially prevent this from killing us. Now, one solution is obviously to build your colony underneath the surface. Another solution is obviously to actually not have a colony or to have a colony populated by robots, similar to what we have on Mars. And the third solution is um, finding some kind of a really, really interesting material that can either deflect the um, the fragments or similarly to the International Space Station to essentially um, absorb it and later later on these fragments can actually be removed uh, manually. So there's, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, problems for us to solve, but essentially that's all I really wanted to mention in this video. And I also kind of just wanted to launch asteroids at the moon and create some more craters because it's actually kind of fun. It is a very satisfying experience. There you go. There's some more. And let's actually just launch something much larger, like Sedna. Because why not? We have all the power in the world. And that was a very large explosion. Here's another one. Just so you can actually see it collide. And anyway, so thank you so much for watching. This is 
uh, all I wanted to say in this video. We're going to stop this right here and talk about something completely different in the next video as well. So share this video if you still haven't, and subscribe if you're still not a subscriber to this channel, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me get better equipment. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. And now I kind of feel bad about destroying the entire moon, because that's really not... That, that wasn't the point of this video. I wanted to be constructive, not destructive. Look what I've done. Now I feel bad. I'm gonna go think about what I've just did. Bye-bye.